let's see if I remember how to do this correctly. Hey YouTube, are you ready for your hot tag? Because if you are, it's definitely time to war. Times NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Scrapper and Adam Pierce, and you're watching WGS TV. I'm the Russell Gamer. Welcome back to another episode of Russell Down, the discussion of wrestling now, right here on WGS TV. I'm going to try to get these reviews out this week as fast as I can, guys. You know, you're going to have to bear with me on a few of them. But uh, before we get to our Monday Night Raw review for this week, I, I would like to announce that Pro Wrestling 225 will be presenting their Basis Loaded event May 1st. 2021 in Tylertown, Mississippi, and I want to quickly run down the card for you guys. First off, Hillbilly Joe will be taking on the lackey of Michael White and Thaddeus, and Rent the Throat Thibodeau from Karen Crow, as we know, if you've been following the PW225 Facebook page, he's on the hunt. He's on the hunt for Michael White and that SEC Championship. Now, speaking of SEC Championship, the former champion, JTM, will be taking on a returning Chase Matthews. The winner of the 2020 Mayor's Cup, the 12-gauge DJ Cyprion, and the live wire Avery Nolan of Team DNA will be have their hands full with the Russian destruction Vladimir Koloff and Charles West of the Pride for the Pro Wrestling 225 Tag Team Championship the Overboys, the Game Changer Christian Blake, the Asian Cajun Jordan Jaw will be defending their titles against Braxton Hunter and Brandon Law of Team 337. And a matchup I never thought I would see in Pro Wrestling 225. Wild Thing Mike Boutro, who's had such a change in attitude, with Big Ramp in his corner, will take a go on his former tag team partner in the Dream Team, the leader of the Boom Nation, Mustang Mike. In our main event, a rematch from March to Madness for the Pro Wrestling 225 Heavyweight Championship. Lucha Liqueur will lock horns, figuratively and literally, with the amalgamation Corey Constantine, who I know has revenge on his mind after the incident that happened back at March to Madness. But now... Before we uh, before we get into the Raw review really quickly, I want to talk about the the new commentator just briefly, Adnan Verk, on a Monday Night Raw. Now, being a commentator myself, you know, I feel that I can pretty much critique a few things about what Adnan Verk is doing. Now, does Adnan Verk have a good voice for sports broadcasting? Yes. But it's very difficult when you try to take an announcer who has solely been broadcasting for sports like Major League Baseball, and then you tr transition him into Monday Night Raw, your, quote, flagship show, and expect things to go off without a hitch. Now, if I had my way with Adnan Verk, I would have had him work through some of the shows like maybe a, maybe like a, a, a let's see, maybe a, one of the shows on the network, maybe like a, a Heat or something, or or maybe even t uh, 205 Live. Have him do one of those shows and have him earn up experience enough so that way he can start making, you know, what I would like to call the the right adjustments and the right way to, to call matches in the pro wrestling industry. But Vince McMahon just said, here, I'm going to put you on Monday Night Raw. You'll know none of the people. You'll have, you'll have somebody yelling in your ear from the gorilla position, and we're just going to expect you on a weekly basis, right off the bat, to do good. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. 
I, I, I say, I still say, Anand Verk should have started on a lower show. I know I'm kind of repeating myself when it comes to that, but I personally believe that, you know, he needs, he needs some work. Now, I, am I saying I'm perfect? No. But after doing it for 12 years, you know, Monday Night Raw, as of late, has already been hard enough to watch. Tom Phillips, I miss the guy. I really do. But Adnan Verk, I don't know. The, I mean, right now he's got no timing down. He's got no rhythm down. He's got no graphs of move terminology uh, or how to coherently tell a storyline on commentary. It is right now just getting to the point where it's just getting... I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, okay, you know, I'll watch Monday Night Raw, but I'm going to mute. Because I can't stand Adnan Verk right now on commentary. Now, I would say hashtag bring Mauro Ronaldo back, but guess where he's at now? If you saw uh, Rebellion, Impact Wrestling Rebellion, You'll know what I mean. But anyway, I think that's enough, you know, ad non verk bashing. All right now, the Lord knows. I never thought I would bash on another commentator worse than Michael Cole. But uh, anyway, guys, let's start talking about Raw. I'd just like everyone to, to briefly note that for this week's review, I am working without a script because it is, uh, essentially I am so far behind that I, I wanted to start doing these videos yesterday, but I never, or, or this morning rather, and I never got a, a chance to do it right now. It is basically 1.53 AM in the morning on, uh, April 28th. So that's exactly why I'm, I'm working without a script. So I'm going to try to basically go through Monday Night Raw as best as I can with all the notes that I have and, and give you guys my thoughts and opinions. Now, originally, the opening match was supposed to be Dominic Dijakovic and Dio Madden. What? What, did I say something wrong? Oh, yeah! I mean, Mason T-Bar. Of, uh, formerly of the, uh, Retribution storyline, and man, has that storyline crapped the fuck out or what? They were supposed to take on, originally, uh, Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre, but backstage, Strowman and McIntyre kind of got into it in a verbal confrontation, you know, with uh, one telling the other, hey, you're going to take my lead, and they would start pulling up their resumes and whatnot, and then Strowman said, you know what, I'm going to go out there and do what you couldn't do the previous week, and that's beat Mason T-Bar in a handicap match. Now, did that happen? No. Now, Strowman did dominate uh, a good part of the match from the start, but everything started to go downhill for uh, the poor old uh, Braun. When they got into the corner, uh, Mason T-Bar continually did the double teaming, which got them DQ'd, and... Surprise, surprise, in the same fashion and fashion, fashion that they did with Strowman last week, out comes Drew McIntyre, he comes to make the save, and then we finally get the tag team match we've been waiting for. Now, the tag team match in of itself was, I want to say, okay, you know, it wasn't really botchy or anything like that. Um, I will say this, though, getting to see... You know, I know you guys are going to say, you know, they're making a T-bar, but it's really Dio Madden and Dominic Dijakovic. Uh, if you follow Dominic Dijakovic and what he did in NXT, I'm going to say it's fucking awesome that he's on the main roster. But they need to start using him properly. And the same can be said for Dio Madden. Now, I haven't really gotten a chance to see much of what Dio Madden can do, even as, even as a part of... Uh, Retribution is maced. I, I would still like to see more out of him. 
I really would like to see more of what he can do. But uh, anyway, back to the tag team match. Uh, in of itself, really, really not much to talk about. But the main premise of what happened here is the legal men were McIntyre and T-Bar, a.k.a. Uh, Dominic Dijakovic. Strowman would start as usual. Strowman Express, thank God they didn't do the train sound effect because when they were doing that, that was just silly. He starts running around. He takes out Mace. Then it looks like he was going to take out T-Bar and I guess McIntyre was basically anticipating that T-Bar was going to get out of the way. We'll go for a clothesline. But he did get out of the way and then McIntyre would actually collide with Strowman. And also McIntyre would end up getting counted out. So Mace and T-Bar win the match by count out. And Strowman, being the usual Strowman that he is, if you guys have watched Raw, you know what I mean. Power slams McIntyre. Now this would set up a match for uh, later on in the evening between the two. And then we will come to find out that a stipulation was added that if Strowman defeated McIntyre, then he would be added to the WrestleMania Backlash uh, Championship match. Up next, it was Miz TV with Elias and Jackson Riker. Uh, this essentially was just them doing, I guess, a live rendition of Hey, Hey, Hop, Hop. You know the music video when you had grown-ass men wearing bunny outfits as a way to make fun of Bad Bunny? I really don't have anything bad to say about Bad Bunny. I mean, everything, anything I said about Bad Bunny, I I talked about during our, the WrestleMania reactions. If you guys saw that video. I know a lot of you have saw that video. Holy crap. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised about that. But, uh... They were doing a live rendition of uh, Hey Hey Hop Hop. That will come Damian Priest in the New Day. And it looked like he was carrying a, a, a bass guitar, or you would think a bass guitar in a guitar case. But apparently it was a guitar case full of tomatoes and they were basically pelleting uh, Miz, Morrison, and, and Elias, and... Jackson Riker with tomatoes. If you guys could see me right here, I my brain just talk trying to talk about it again feels like it's gonna melt. Because we literally had a segment on Monday Night Raw where one person is throwing tomatoes at another person. Who is writing this? That's all I can say right now, is who is writing this. But we would get our six-man tag matchup next. Miz, Elias, and Jackson Riker taking on New Day and Damian Priest. Uh... I gotta say, six man tag match. Okay. You know, I'm not gonna dwell too much on it. Uh, the finish of the match was Xavier Woods uh, capturing Jackson Riker with an inside cradle to pick up the wind. Now, if you guys remember last week with Charlotte Flair losing her shit against uh, referee Eddie Orango and, and what happened on Raw Talk with uh, Adam Pierce basically suspending indefinitely Charlotte Flair, Flair and fining her $100,000. Well, Sonya Deville, who I thought was primarily a WWE official on SmackDown, appeared on Monday Night Raw, brought out Charlotte Flair and uh, referee Eddie Oringo. Uh, Charlotte basically apo uh, made an apology said that she was sorry, said she paid her uh, fine in full, and then made Eddie Arango apologize to her, saying that Eddie made a mistake. 
when uh, Rhea Ripley interfered in her uh, in her match last week against Oscar. So Sonya Deville, I guess, has the authority to lift suspensions. Kayfabe wise, I guess, being the WWE official, and then said that Charlotte Flair would also have a match tonight, but didn't say against who. Now, last week, Sheamus started his United States Championship Open Challenge thing, and we saw what that was. It was just, one, the return of Humberto Carrillo, officially. Unofficially, we've seen him run after R-Truth or whoever was holding the 24-7 championship on numerous occasions. But officially, in, into an active storyline, it was Humberto Carrillo, and he got basically beat down by Sheamus. Now, it looked like the same thing was going to happen again this week, but it, th but this time they kind of gave the edge to Alberto Carrillo, who basically got, you know, the better of Sheamus. What does basically, from what I feel, this is just leading into a championship match to happen at WrestleMania Backlash. Now, will they, would they put the you know, United States Championship on Alberto? I don't know. I don't know. Now, Bobby Lashley and MVP. Now, y'all, let me just say this. I know there are a lot of you guys out there who have jumped on the Bobby Lashley bandwagon. And you know what? I salute you for that. I mean, I will agree the man has had it rough in his wrestling career. You know, it took him a long time in WWE-wise. I mean, if you think about what he did at Impact Wrestling, he's been a multiple-time champion over there. But apparently WWE doesn't want you to know that. But, you know, he's a multiple-time champion. Uh, well, secondary champion. You know, he's a former ECW champion, uh, former United States champion. I don't think he's ever had the Intercontinental title. But him winning the WWE Championship, you know, I say kudos to Lashley. You know, WWE finally putting some stock into him. But I refuse to jump on the Lashley bandwagon. Because to me, he'll be ever... For two main reasons. One, he will be forever the guy who was always bending over on live television and pointing at his butt. And then the fuckers... You heard me right. The fuckers over on New Legacy Inc. made a Twitch emote of Bobby Lashley's ass and then one of my mods, Lizzie, tortured me with Lashley's butt for an emote for many a Twitch stream. Now, do I hold that against Bobby Lashley? Yes! Because it's his ass! And the other reason I will not jump on the Bobby Lashley bandwagon for being involved in one of the stupidest storylines I have ever seen in my entire life when he was romantically involved with Lana. Now, I would like to find out whoever wrote that storyline and slap him upside the face. But now that I got that out of the way, they were just you know, talking about him being the almighty WWE champion, that Drew McIntyre wasn't going to take the championship at WrestleMania Backlash. It's going to happen the same thing. It's going to put on the hurt lock. He's going to pass out. Yada, yada, yada. Boom. That's essentially what the promo was. Randy Orton and Riddle. What are they doing here? I don't know. Randy Orton apparently agreed to be a, a tag team partner for Middle Riddle. And they, as they took on Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, the... I, I, I gotta say, if there was 
if they ever teased a turn for someone, I don't know why they didn't do it here for Orton. I mean, I'm going to say Orton right here could have been, could be right now technically viewed as a tweener. But I don't know. I, I really don't know what they're doing here. Um, I mean, it's... Can you guys tell that I'm really not working with a script here? Uh, but uh, I gotta say, you know, it, it was interesting to see them, you know... Uh, anyway, the finish of the match was uh, after Randy Orton hit the uh, his uh, DDT. That set up uh, Shelton Benjamin for Riddle and the floating bro as Randy Orton and Riddle pick up the win. The next match was a six-woman tag match. Asuka, Naomi, and Lana taking on the Raw Women's Champion Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax. You know what, I'm, I'm going to say this right here, because uh, even though I've bashed on Lana quite a lot on my channel, uh, I, I will say that she's really starting to learn and adapt. She's working on her moves. She's been taking her bumps. So I'm going to give credit where credit due. She's improving. She's improving. But. I don't know. I, I mean. Take a look where Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, and Asuka were. A year ago. As to where they are now. I wonder. You would have to come to the same conclusion that I'm coming to, and that's WWE does not know what they're doing with their talent. They may have been able to do it for an NXT, but when they go to the main roster, I really don't know what's going on. Now, during this match, once again, let me just put it to you like this uh, very quickly. Uh, Re Reginald's back, but apparently that didn't stop Angel Garza from sending some flowers to Nia Jax, trying to hit on her again, and Brandon Nia Jax decided to take those flowers and hit Mandy Rose and Data Brooke with it. So, what happens with that? They come out during the match to try to distract Nia. Shayna uh, goes out there to confront him. They throw a bucket of water at Shayna, the entire ringside area. That part of the ringside area is wet. Nia Jax falls flat on her face and then can't get back up expecting to get a laugh out of everybody. Now, if you want to laugh and cry out of something that is so sad that it shouldn't be on TV... Go right ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. However, you were, to me, at that point, I was thinking, okay, they're going to have a repeat of what happened last week. You know, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke came out, caused a distraction. Naomi and Lana uh, defeat Shayna Baszler at night. Jax, because Knight was distracted. They did not go that route. Uh, thankfully, uh, Rhea Ripley first would hit the Riptide on Lana, and then uh, uh, Nia Jax would hit her big leg drop as uh, Ripley, Baszler, and Jax pick up the win here. The Alexa Bliss segment. Oh my fucking god, the Alexa Bliss segment! Now, I don't know how I feel about this. On one hand, there's anger. 
because the Fiend gimmick was so good with Bray Wyatt that they could have ran with it for so long. But now, Bliss and Lily. My biggest fear here is that this is basically going to be essentially a female fiend. That's what I'm feeling what this is going to be turning into. They're basically taking the fiend off of Bray Wyatt and they're putting it on Alexa Bliss in the form of Lily. And apparently we're supposed to be seeing some sort of or seeing some sort of uh, indication of that because apparently Lily is supposed to be making her debut next week according to this promo. Oh, by the way, uh, WWE writing, I've seen better jump scares on Five Nights at Freddy's. But, uh... Next, it was Charlotte Flair and Mandy Rose. This was set up by Sonya Deville. Go figure. Eddie Orango was the official. Now, several times... Again, it, this really makes me wonder what they're doing now with Charlotte Flair because it really, really kind of looks like they have no clue as to what they're doing. It looked like at several points during the match that Charlotte Flair's attention was more towards Eddie Arango rather than Mandy Rose and that Rose would somehow pick up the win and then Charlotte Flair would once again lose her shit and attack Eddie Arango again. However, that was not the case though. Charlotte would hit the natural selection on Mandy and to pick up the win, but she would still have some glaring moments at Arango, especially when she was leaving the ring. So again, I personally don't know what's going on here which, what, and what they're doing with Charlotte Flair. Maybe you guys can, uh, if you have some comments in the comment section below, I would definitely like to hear what you guys think. And of course, the main event, Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. Sadly, the most interesting match of the night. All things considered. You know, especially with the big stipulation being, you know, the win uh, if Strowman wins, then... Strowman gets added to the Backlash, uh, WrestleMania Backlash Championship match. And, uh, of course, Bobby Lashley and MVP were out there. Uh, you know, there were several instances where, uh, you know, they were playing distractions on... For, it looked like on both ends, you know, uh, Lashley trying to distract Strowman and then MVP not so much distracting uh, Drew McIntyre, but trying to motivate him to win or something to keep the match one-on-one. -on -one. And at one point, it almost looked like it was going to go back in Tyre's way. But Strowman would hit the power slam on McIntyre. Strowman would pick up the win, and now he is officially added to the WrestleMania Backlash match. Again, I miss using scripts. I promise you guys I'm going to start uh, trying to get... Uh, the script's done earlier so that way I can give you guys better reviews than this late review, late, late review that I'm doing here on the channel. Time for overall score and thoughts. You guys have already heard what I've had to say about the commentary or lack of good commentary with, uh, Adnan Burke, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxton. Why Samoa Joe got canned, I'll never know. What has happened to Monday Night Raw? I mean, seriously, what has happened? I mean... Let's, again, just a quick rundown. You know, the tag team match, the first off, the handicap match kind of went the way I was expecting it to go and so was the uh, the tag team match 
Miss TV with Elias from Jackson Record, that live edition of uh, Hey Hey Hop Hop. I don't know why I keep coming back to it, but it's something that just sticks out in my mind. Six man tag match was kind of uh, right in the middle. Uh, again, I would like to know the not only the direction they're going with Charlotte Flair, but what are they doing with Sonya Deville? And like I said earlier in the review, I thought Sonya Deville was basically, her character was basically an official on SmackDown. Um, it's nice to see this uh, storyline developing between Sheamus and Alberto Carrillo. However, is Carrillo right now ready for a run at the United States Championship? I'm not so sure. Um, I've already voiced my opinion about Bobby Lashley, so I'm not really going to talk too much about that segment. Uh, a lot of people are thinking, you know, this, you know, Randy Orton and Riddle thing is not going to last too long, but who knows? I mean, but WWE's done some dumb things before. I mean, if you guys remember uh, the tag team they're going to do with Chris Jericho and AJ Styles, uh, the very next week when they start breaking off merch, for that tag team they broke up the tag team you know that's logic 101 right now right there with wwe or lack thereof with wwe so i'm, I'm really not putting too much stock into it the six woman tag team match uh normally i would i would say i love any segment that i see oscar in and she was essentially you know basically the only thing that really held my interest in the tag match Alexa Bliss is a female fiend. You know, a lot of people are saying no to that. But you know what? I'm gonna give her them the benefit of the of the doubt and see what happens next week when they finally break Lily loose and see what happens. And see how exactly they work this. And who knows, maybe we'll see Bray Wyatt have a response to it. I mean, we only saw Bray Wyatt do one promo, and that was I believe the the I want to say a week ago or two weeks ago it might have been two weeks ago but uh Charlotte Flair and Mandy Rose was okay for what it was but again they're they're teasing some sort of I guess temperament break with Charlotte Flair like she could lose her temper and just snap and start attacking people like she did with Eddie Oringo and then the main event I guess WWE was thinking, you know, it, with McIntyre and Lashley, been there, done that, let's add something different to it, and apparently that, that something different is uh, Braun Strowman, so, Monday Night Raw, my first review of 2021, Monday Night Raw, 2 out of 5, and this being kind. Extremely kind. Best match of the night. I'm going to go to the main event. McIntyre and Strowman. Worst match of the night. Take your pick. I mean, the six-man tag match with Miz, Elias, Jackson, Riker, and Dude, and Damian Priest. Why? Randy Orton, Red on Cedric Alexander, and Shelton Benjamin. Ever since they separated those two from the Hurt business, they've been basically been getting shafted. I mean, for the last two weeks, they got beaten up by the Viking... Uh... Excuse me, my throat's kind of dry right now. The Viking Raiders. Good to see them back, by the way. Uh, but we did not see them at all this week, so... But Randy Orton and Riddle as a tag team, I don't know... I, I've already, like I said, I've already talked about it on here. I don't want to say anything bad about Asuka. Because if you guys have been following the channel for as long as you have, you know about how I feel about Asuka. So I don't blame her at all. I blame the booking. That's who I blame. But anyway, guys and gals... That's been my thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. Don't forget to check out Pro Wrestling 225's Bases Loaded event, May 1st, 
2021 in Tyler Cloud, Mississippi. And I also want to know what what did you guys think of Raw this week? What are your overall scores? What are your thoughts? I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, be sure you slam that like button. Like a champ. And if you guys want to see more of Wrestle Down, and I'm, trust me, guys, I'm going to try to not only bring you more Wrestle Downs, but I'm going to be sure that I have my my reviews prepared, scripted, and and more thought out than what I've done here tonight. I do apologize about that. But I definitely want to bring you guys more Wrestle Downs, so. Be sure you like up the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications so that you guys will never miss out on another video right here on my channel. So with that being said, I am your friendly neighborhood Russell Gamer reminding all of you guys out there to just stay awesome. Bye guys!